Of all the immuno-oncology or IO biomarkers pathologists look at, PDL1 is one of the most well studied. PDL1 is a cell surface protein found on tumor cells and immune cells. It is involved in the negative regulation of immune responses, and its role as a prognostic and predictive biomarker continues to be researched in clinical trials. PDL1 binds to its receptor, PD1, on immune cells such as T cells. When PDL1 binds to PD1, it can negatively regulate T cell activity, contributing to T cell exhaustion resulting in suppression of anti-tumor immunity. Unlike traditional oncogenic mutations, which are either present or not present in a patient's tumor, PDL1 is not binary. It has dynamic expression that can range from 0% to 100%. PDL1 expression is typically measured by immunohistochemistry, or IHC, and determined by counting the number of stained cells. Depending on the scoring algorithm that you are using, you can assess PDL1 expression on tumor cells, immune cells, or both tumor and immune cells in a single measurement. When looking at PDL1, keep in mind that expression levels may vary by tumor type, as shown here, as well as histology, location, and the patient's line of therapy. The PDL1 thresholds that may be relevant for treatment selection are specific to the tumor type being assessed and which scoring algorithm is being used. In pathology, it's important to remember to keep PDL1 testing considerations in mind when making decisions throughout the patient tissue journey. Take the acquisition phase, for example. When we are looking at different collection methods, I ask myself, how much tissue will I need for downstream testing? and how can I preserve that tissue? I typically assume that we will need a slide with at least 100 tumor cells for PDL1 testing, in addition to tissue needed for other biomarker tests that the patient's case may require. During processing, we can help preserve the tissue obtained by separating biopsies into individual blocks. Formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded tissue, or FFPE, in four to five micron sections is recommended for most FDA approved assays. Tumor heterogeneity is another factor. When testing and interpreting PDL1 expression, keep in mind that there may be differing expression levels within a single biopsy and also between different biopsy specimens. It is often recommended to divide larger samples up so there are equal amounts of tumor on each slide and to evaluate each one individually for the amount of PDL1 expression and I always consider whether we are testing newly collected tissue or archival samples. While both are acceptable, there is some evidence suggesting that PDL1 immunohistochemistry expression may decrease over time. Of course, we can minimize degradation by processing and storing the samples properly. Once you've determined the PDL1 expression level, it is also important that you communicate this information clearly. Reporting procedures may vary by location but it is typically recommended to include the antibody clone or kit used and the numeric score itself. Be sure to discuss PDL1 reporting protocols with other members of your multidisciplinary team. As with many aspects of the patient tissue journey, frequent and open communication is critical to the success of biomarker testing. Due to our central role in the tissue journey, it is important to understand how when and why we test for biomarkers like PDL1. In pathology, this is just one way that we can help ensure the right patient gets the right treatment at the right time.